Hello and welcome to another episode of the Bad Ideas Garage. My name is Stephen, and this is my 1998 C43 AMG Ute. I have absolutely no intention of building a Ute out of this car. However, in June of 2020, I was on a pleasure drive with my wife, and we got smushed in between a couple of trucks. And this was the outcome. After a couple of lectures and some bad ideas, the guys in the Bad Ideas Garage said, hey, it'll you know be really funny. Why don't we take that car that you just got in an accident with? Why don't you cut off the back, turn it into a Ute, and put it in the Gambler 500? So I did. And then after that, I decided, you know what? I actually really like this car. And so we decided to make it nice. And that's what we have today. It's actually a pretty nice car. I'll be doing a review of the whole thing in the future. It's also going to be in the Avance magazine coming up. And I'm very excited about that. So this is a real AMG. And I know that some of you are going to be, like, oh my goodness, you did this to an AMG? No, 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 no. You can blame a certain individual who was driving a certain Ford truck that hit a certain Hyundai that hit me, that pushed me into a certain Dodge because of a certain Honda decided to make a stop in a certain highway in Oregon. And we decided that it would be a really good idea, idea to be right in the middle of all of that while my wife was eight months pregnant. That was a really uh, fun time. However, in between the time that that happened and the time that we had our first son, uh, this conversion happened. It was not the smoothest story. There were a couple of mechanics in between that decided to have some creative freedom of what happened with this car. And so that's what you're going to be learning in today's story. I first saw the car on Facebook Marketplace. Dale sent it to me and he's like, you gotta have this. And at that point in my life, I'm like, eh, probably not the best idea because I recently moved. I didn't have a lot of garage space. I didn't have a lot of money. However, it was just 1200 bucks and it was up in Vancouver, Washington. And we both happened to have that evening off. And so we went up there and behold, it was a sight to see. It wasn't in bad shape, but it looked like it had been sitting for a little bit. And the only thing reported wrong was that it needed a battery. Now, if you don't know much about these Mercedes, they need really large batteries, but Dale happened to have one on the shelf. We popped one in, it fired right up. We went on a test drive and it ran really well. And so I drove it home from Vancouver, Washington to where I live in Albany. It's about an hour and a half or two hour drive. And it was really no big deal. It was just really dirty and the person previously who used it definitely took it to the construction site because I found a couple of tools in it. There's some putty that was in the back of it and it was pretty tough. However, after a quick wash, I didn't even detail it. This thing looked wonderful. It was amazing and I fell in love with the car and knew that it was something that I wanted to keep in the long run. I also knew that I wanted to put it on the track. I had experience going to autocross and a couple of track days, but I never really had a car that I could dedicate to motorsport purposes. And so I signed up for a couple of track days at PIR. I went with my driving instructor a couple of times to some HPDE events, which I strongly recommend if you've never been on the track before. And this did great, despite the fact at that time it had about 253,000 miles on it. The car just was wonderful. The That V8 engine just made an incredible noise. I was able to get it up to 120, 125 miles an hour when I was coming out of the turns correctly. So thanks to my driving instructor for helping me learn how to do that. And it was just great, despite having so many miles on it. A couple other things that we got to do together were we got to go to Mary Hill Loop Road uh, in the Columbia River Gorge. And the first time that I took it up there, I didn't realize that there was a slight problem with the suspension. Yeah, that right there, where the bushing and the sway bar are supposed to, you know, meet. Um, it was outside of the bushing, which meant when I took right hand turns, the car would lean because the sway bar was disconnected. And then, of course, I got to go with my parents and my new wife. And it was an absolute blast, mostly because I convinced my mom to get into the car with me to go on a run. I'll let her reaction talk for itself. Oh, 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 oh,
So then the accident. So I was on a back road. I was going on a nice pleasure cruise with my wife and my dog. And on the way home, we were probably about 10 minutes away from home. We got smushed in between a couple of vehicles and it was not good. Thankfully, my wife, who was eight months pregnant at the time, and my elderly dog, they were completely fine. And it just so happened that the truck that was in front of us, we got shoved into a truck. He was the ER doctor and he was on his way to work. So we saw him in about a half an hour later and they were all great. Ashley and the baby were fine. I have some back injuries to this day that I'm still working through. However, now that it's all said and done, I can see how well these cars are built. However, immediately I, I knew that the car was done and I posted a couple pictures online and some people were like, oh, you can totally fix it. But I looked at the subframe, I took it to a professional for evaluation and they were like, probably not. The biggest telltale sign is in the rear on the passenger side, uh, the door didn't line up with the body anymore and that sort of structural integrity loss, I would never feel comfortable having people in the back anymore. So I was, I was ready to let it go. That's until the guy said, you know what? We have the Gambler 500 coming up. You also have a baby that's going to be born soon. So why don't we put this in the Gambler 500? It's kind of the last hurrah before baby comes. And I'm like, no, we shouldn't do it. They're like, yes, we should do this and we should turn it into a ute. So I'm like, okay. So we went to work doing that. All righty, here's the walk around. And today is June 9th. All right, we're now taking apart the front, the core support popped out and uh, yeah, trailer hitch right there. Once we got it back to the shop, we took apart everything in the rear and we saw just how extensive the damage was, at least up top. It's a fun subframe, everybody looks happy. It's sitting on its motor mounts where they're supposed to be. Nothing here was torqued. Yeah, that all looks good. Okay. Underneath, the car looked really good. Um, in the front, we noticed that the transmission had been pushed back just a little bit. It's loose because it's a neutral, I think. Uh, it's loose because you have no bushings left. Oh, or that. Look at your subframe. No, that looks particularly out of torque either. That looks okay. All right. Of course, the trailer hitch that we got shoved into went straight through the radiator and the air conditioning condenser. It actually pushed the water pump uh, into the engine block and it seized that. However, the engine ended up running just fine. And after putting the transmission and engine cradle up about half an inch, uh, the engine ran great and the car was drivable at that point. However, we still decided, despite all of that and underneath looking good, we still decided we wanted to turn this into a ute because that rear passenger compartment with the way that the body came through was just crooked. Alrighty, well, we're trying to start it, but it doesn't know what gear it's in, so it's not gonna let us. All right, let's see if we got enough juice. Now that the car thinks it's in park. Yep, that is, uh, that's no good. And we're also now missing the hood. Fun stuff. All right, so we bought yesterday two radiators. I'm glad that we did because uh, this one, even though it's the nicer one, um, the pipes are on the wrong side. This one, it's kind of kind of beat up in a couple places, but it should work. We got our fans, all sorts of fun tools. We have the new water pump in. The old one was smashed, so that is that. Hood is off. And then back here, we have a lot of the rear interior out already, which is great. And now we are going to attempt to pull this out because look at that smash. Trying to pull that out with this. What could possibly go wrong? The goal is to use this winch and this Gambler 500 vehicle to pull out this bumper from this Gambler 500 vehicle. We tried to pull it out using the most convenient slash way that you should not pull out dents or pull out frame parts uh, or pull out a unibody. Shouldn't we, we don't recommend doing this. However, we gave it a couple of uh, tugs with a winch and a lot of the crinkles came out. However, no matter what we did, we were not able to get it completely straight. But it was good enough for the gambler because my mindset at this point was, you know what? We just need this to be straight enough for me to be able to do the Gambler 500. 
on a side note, if you don't know the Gambler 500 is, it is effectively take a car that's about $500, drive it from somewhere in the Valley of Oregon over somewhere into the high desert of Oregon, over the Cascade Mountains, but don't go on pavement. You have to do it all off road. My job is to hold the brakes and hopefully that the Harbor Freight chocks that I bought are gonna hold. Oh, here we go. Yep, front of the car is moving. All right, so uh, I've taken it for a test drive and it worked really, really well, which is great, ran good. And here is where we are at so far. So uh, we have much of the uh, rear taken out. Uh, yes, I did cut my finger pretty good. Um, and so what we're doing now is we are taking out the headliner because we want to get that all cut out before we start cutting the frame. Yeah, look at that. And there's all sorts of really nasty things that have been here for the last 22 years. So that's where we're at so far. Alrighty, so we are about to make our first cut. We now have a, a ute. So when the guy started cutting up the car, this became really real to me because I, I love this car. And I was honestly having a really hard time watching them do this. And I'm not one for power tools as it is. So I'm very grateful to Jamie and Dale for encouraging me. I did try it out, definitely not my thing. And I was just really anxious and really sad about what had happened. And I, I know that we had to stick with the plan and I'm really glad that we stuck with the plan, but it's still really difficult to see this happen to my car. Alrighty, so we now have a beautiful hood in and edges have been ground down. So that's what's left there. There we go, we also took out the pillars from the window. Now what we're doing is we're gonna mock up and put some sheet metal back here, weld this in. Some of the carnage that we have with this, that Going over there. We were also under an immense time crunch because the Gambler 500 was coming very quickly. We then decided how are we going to put a rear window in this? And so Jamie devised a plan to go buy a piece of sheet metal and then cut a hole for a window and pop that in the back. And it worked really well. We then just needed to find a window that would fit. And we tried to find a couple of slider windows from pickup trucks and realized that was going to be difficult to get out. But then Dale came up with the idea of getting a Euro van uh, side window and that is what we ended up using and it ended up working really well and just so happened the junkyard a couple miles down the street from us had a euro van that hadn't been there for very long which means that we were able to grab that whole window assembly very easily and that's what i ran with on the gambler 500 and it was really easy to open the window and close it and it was very easy to fit in i guess i shouldn't say it was easy to fit, it, fit in because you know i wasn't the one that was doing all of this work but jamie made it look really easy our um completed um, back window. This is actually from a uh, Euro van, which is pretty cool. And then Dale is working on getting this dent out. We got this dent, which looks much, much, much better. So now he's Come doing on. some, doing a little bit of PDR, Dale, to get this all figured out. Yeah, I whacked on it with a hammer and dolly, and there's only so much you can do there. And so I'm dubious as to whether how much we can pull out here. But Give it a little shot and see if we get a little bit more deflection. This looks a lot better than it used to be, which is great. And here we are. Going to get this. Um, and yes, I did slice off part of my finger, but that's okay. Going to get this door card on, that door card on, and then if we're lucky, we'll be able to mock up the uh, the window tonight. Jamie, how are you feeling about all this? All right. Towards the end of making this gambler ready, Jamie really decided that he wanted to make this something that he really liked and that he was going to be proud of. And so my hat's off to you. Well, I'm not really a hat right now, but my hat's off to you, Jamie. I also want to give him a shout for this roll bar that he made. This really was the crowning achievement of the vehicle. Uh, when Jamie got this all done and he did all of this by hand without a pipe bender, it just looked phen phenomenal. Sadly, we don't have this part anymore a little bit of a story for why that's the case, but it was just a really cool thing and I wanted to give Jamie a shout for that.
So this is effectively what it looked like when I went on the Gambler 500. I wanted to try to get some off-road tires for the Gambler 500 because it's all on dirt, but I wasn't able to find anything that fit. And again, we were under a time crunch. So I just went as is exactly with my track prep. It wasn't really a track car, but I had B8 Super Sport shocks on it. I had my summer tires, which are the general RS Maxes, which are not designed for the dirt. I had nearly new Brembos on it, and this thing just did amazing. I was able to drive it to a business networking event once, and all my colleagues were like, what is this? And I told them what the Gambler 500 was, and it was just great. The vehicle did wonderful getting across the Cascades. We ended up meeting up with a couple of old friends. However, there were a couple holes that we left that were at the bottom of the metal insert we put in the back. And we just didn't really think about it, but those let in an immense amount of dust. And we were never able to get the air conditioning working. It was one of those things that we, we tried and we ran out of time, especially because that was a non-critical part. So we just let it go as is. And so the interior just got absolutely disgusting. All right, so this cabin is uh, real dirty. Yep, real dirty. And that was on the hot days. Then it started to snow. Huh? Start taking this down <clears throat> and yep that's snow so this car had to go through kind of it felt kind of like a rally stage honestly in the snow and the temperature kept dropping as we were going over the cascades so the regular gambler 500 was not anywhere close to where we were going however we wanted to go over into the christmas valley sand dunes and so we drove over from bend oregon china hat road and then made our way overland over to the sand dunes and even in the snow this thing did absolutely wonderful and on summer tires this thing was just unstoppable it was amazing so i thought at least i was going to be able to do like maybe a little bit of sand dune fun I thought I was going to be able to drive on the sand dunes a little bit. Not at all. I, mean, I got stuck a couple times and then realized I'm just I'm just not going to do it. So we ended up going uh, having a lot of fun with uh, Matthew and his Crown Victoria wagon, which was amazing. And then, of course, Dale's ML was an absolute champ and proceeded to pull Matthew out several times when he got stuck. And the Mercedes got to watch from the side. So then when I got back from the gambler and then my kid still wasn't born yet because he came late. I was talking with Jamie and Jamie was like, I want to make this into a nice you, I think that this would be amazing. And so he continued to do some Bondo work and some straightening work on the body. And honestly, it, it came out really, really good. And again, thanks, Jamie, for making that happen. This is what it looked like just before Noah was born. And of course, sitting right next to what his Subaru Ute looked like at the time. Then my son was born. So Noah came in July. And then we had these massive wildfires in 2020. Fun fact, at the time I had access to a 2017 Nissan Leaf. You can put a thousand pounds worth of animal feed in the back of a Nissan Leaf and it will move and it will drive. It will not stop very well. So a little bit after this, I needed to figure out what to do with it. And Jamie was like, you have to continue to work on it. You have to fix it because this is awesome. And there's a guy down the street from me who said, you know what, I'm a metal specialist and I'm going to go work on it. And he had some really cool ideas and I'm like, okay, I don't really have much to lose. And it was a little bit of a mistake because his vision for the car and my vision for the car were very different. Uh, he kind of had a steampunk vision and like off-roady vision for the Ute. And it's not really what I was looking for. And I was busy with my kid and he kept making iteration after iteration. And we were going to put some vinyl wrap on it. We were going to do maybe like a snow theme. At one point, it was blue. And by the time that we were done, I mean, it was it was okay. And I wasn't really happy with it. But it was something that would be at home in like a Mad Max type scene. And that's really not what I wanted to do. And so, again, I was focused on my kid. And I'm like, I don't have time to mess with it. But I got the car back. And this is how it ended up looking. So I wasn't totally happy with the car, but again, I'm in new dad mode. I don't really know what I'm doing. I have to figure out how to be able to go and have a career, I have a business to run as well. And so I ended up working with another mechanic who had some really cool ideas and sound really familiar and wanted to go do X, Y, and Z. And I said, okay, it's not going to hurt. It's going to be better than what it is now. And so unbeknownst to me, he took this down to bare metal and took apart the entire vehicle which i wasn't necessarily overly happy with it's because what we had in place 
with the rear window situation and with the, with the roll bar. I honestly liked it. But the roll bar that he had in mind was really cool. He showed me an inspirational uh, photo of a Nissan GTR that someone had muted in Japan, actually. I'm like, oh, okay, we, we can go ahead and do this. The process took a very long time, and it was a very, very long wait for me because as my kid started to get a little older, I started to be able to learn a little bit of time management skill with the kid and my work, et cetera. And I was like, okay, well, now I can go and work on it. However, he took a very long time to be able to get the car to where it was. He kept taking it back to bare metal because he wasn't happy with how things were turning out. However, when I finally got it back, this is what it looked like, more or less. And I do like the way that the roll bar turned out. At one point, he had put a wing at the back, and that was, that was pretty cool, but it was really not functional whatsoever. So I took the rear wing off, and then I started to fix all of the things that were left unfixed by both of the mechanics. And then finally, I was able to make my very own YouTube video about the EGR and the coil packs that had gone out with this. So a couple of things that were missing from the car is that for some reason, the previous mechanic only made this really awesome louver on one side and then left the other side blank. So I was, wasn't sure what to do because that piece of metal took probably a long time, a lot of talent to be able to make. So I cut a regular piece of sheet metal and then I went to Extreme Graphics here in Albany, Oregon. And we had that wrapped with my company name on it because this is actually, it's my company car. There are a lot of weird places with the paint that got just really thin or that were just not painted well in the first place. And so I worked with Raleigh, maybe you remember him from the Acura CL video, and he came with his expert views and worked on several parts of the ute. And now it looks really, really dang good. The body is super smooth. That's a testament to Jamie's hard work. He made that really great. And I get to take that to community events. Uh, we once had a pop-up car show down the street that I got to take it out. It's one of the first times that it was in presentable uh, mode and I was able to really bless the community with it and then go to a lot of local car shows and it just gets a lot of buzz. And now this is what it looks like and it, it's pretty dang good. I'll do a full review at some point to give the ins and outs about the things that I'm happy with and the things that I'm not happy with. The best part about it though, my kid loves it. And so he's too young to be able to ride in it, but we like to play it in the back and he takes his trucks and he rides it all over it because I put rubber pieces all around the back and I put Rhino line in the back. Believe it or not, I actually use this as a truck. Uh, I've shown up to Lowe's several times and put wood in it. Uh, the bed is about five and a half feet, so it's not overly conducive to have things like sheets of plywood. However, it's really easy to be able to put six foot boards and you can put them over the top of the cab uh, because there's some protection up there now and I could strap them down and get them home. So I'm very happy where, where it is now. There's a list of things that I'd like to do before it is in the Avance magazine, but I wanted to give you an idea of the process of what it took to get this from a beloved sedan into a beloved ute. So that's the story of this 1998 C43 AMG. I had no intention of turning it into a ute, as I said, but I think I made the best out of a really, really bad opportunity. And I have no intentions of ever getting rid of it. So I should be making some more videos of it in the future, including a full review. It's also going to be in a magazine article in Avance coming up. I'm very excited about that. I'll put a link to Avance in the description below. As always, please like and subscribe. We are very close to hitting a thousand subscribers. That's a very exciting time. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. Hope that you enjoy our content. Thoughts, comments, concerns, musings, or haikus, please send them to the Bad Ideas Garage at gmail.com. You can also see our webpage at thebadideasgarage.com. See you next time.